My name is Peter Sidorn. I farm on a small farm on the outskirts of Chester and um, we've diversified into uh, three different enterprises in order to survive. We've diversified into horses, caravans and we have a small suckler cow herd hoping to produce prime beef for uh, a retail market. The main concern I have as a small farm farmer with a suckler herd is that tuberculosis could devastate my herd. Since 1950, there has been a um, campaign by the government to control the disease, but it does overhang us all the time, the fact that, particularly since uh, foot and mouth in 2001, the disease has um, expanded considerably in certain parts of the UK. TB is a bacterial infection, um, Mycobacterium bovis, which infects the whole of the body of not just bovine animals, but um, a whole range of species from goats to sheep to a range of species in wildlife, badgers, foxes, um, and all sorts of other, other species. So it's wide ranging and the effect is that they produce all sorts of uh, inflammation and um, lesions in the body of the animal, mainly in the lymphatic system and in the lungs. And these are often picked up, well they are picked up at post-mortem in abattoirs. And that is how some farmers have actually found out they've got the disease because the the other mode of testing, which is a skin test, has not picked them up. Uh, badgers are particularly uh, targeted because they can harbour the disease for years and years without it actually killing them. Um, other species are more vulnerable and will die, and it's a horrible death to die. If you take the government's figures, the average cost of a TB outbreak is £30,000. That's obviously taking the very large dairy farms with the smaller dairy farms, likewise the beef units. But of that, £20,000 is uh, stood by the government in terms of compensation. The other 10000 is a total loss to the farmer. That means loss of the breeding stock, which he probably can't replace or can only do so at great cost. Uh, but also in terms of his business being uh, shut down for 60 days, till he, or even longer than that, until he has a clear test. There are two main attacks on this disease. One is the methods of testing cattle um, using the skin test, the comparative skin test, uh, which is the, one, the main one that's used, but it is not totally accurate so you do get cows testing positive when they actually haven't got the disease so there is a, there is a problem with that. Um, the other um, line of attack is on pre-movement testing so all cattle have to be tested um, within a 60 day window if they want to be moved. On the wildlife side this is where there are, there are so many options of how we can deal with the disease Primarily it is culling of badgers in hotspot areas. Um, it is vaccinating animals which are clean, have not got the disease, in order to prevent spread. The two main uh, protagonists in this issue about whether to cull or not are obviously the badger um, protection societies who obviously say that culling of badgers has no effect whatsoever on controlling the disease. And they usually cite the Krebs trials. Uh, the other <coughs> side of the coin is the farmers obviously say that wherever the disease is, it needs to be eradicated. It doesn't matter whether it's in badgers or not. I mean, as a farmer myself, I like badgers. I don't want to see them destroyed. But likewise, I don't want to see cattle destroyed with the disease either. We need to trap a badger from every set. 
humanely dispose of it and then test it. Because the problem with TB is you cannot test accurately the disease in the live animal. You can only do it post-mortem. So if we can take one animal out of every set and test it post-mortem, if that animal goes down with the disease, we can be fairly 99% certain the whole set has got it, purely by the nature of how infectious it is, as a, as, because it's contagious. If that's, that animal is clear, leave the set alone and you've, you've not destroyed a viable set and it can continue to flourish. The problem of blanket culling is that it then leaves ground open to other badges coming in. And if they're infected badges, well, it just gives them a, more of a chance to spread their infection. Whereas if you're leaving um, viable sets, you won't get infected badges coming in because they are very territorial. If we just take the figures of 2009 that the government issued, it's cost £63 million for one year. Over a 10-year period, that's going to be £630 million of the taxpayers' money. And it's not actually controlling the disease. My method, I think, would mean that initially there would be a higher cost than your 63 million, but over the longer term, because the disease, I feel, would be controlled more effectively and quickly, the cost overall, over, say, a 10-year or even 20-year period, would be less. I've shared my idea of this control method with the NFU, who are the, the main uh, spokesman for the farming community on their website, also with the Welsh Assembly Government Forum who have asked for farmers' comments and ideas about control methods and what they would be in agreement with. I feel that the benefits of this control system um, are that it gives nature a fair chance in that um, undiseased sets and other wildlife are not destroyed in a blanket fashion. Uh, secondly, the, it gives a fair chance to the farmer to control the disease in his cattle once and for all. And finally, it gives the taxpayer a fair deal